this one here, this piston, uh, mm -hmm. I think was kind of interesting because kind of talked about in the magazine before, if you're gonna be designing a piston, mm -hmm. start with the rings. And yes. that's exactly what we did. We called you guys, we said, hey, what's the coolest kind of trick ring package we can use on this 4AG piston that we're gonna mm -hmm. have built for us? You guys came through, you gave us all the dimensions, we gave it to the piston manufacturer, and they made the piston exactly what it needed to be to have the right clearances and, and everything for these rings so that they'll perform at its best. It looks pretty trick. Now, I don't know all the details, but mm -hmm. this looks like that's an anodized, some type of anodized groove in it too as well. Correct, correct. This has an electroless uh, nickel plating. Okay, perfect. It works the same way as like an anodizing. It's a mm -hmm. very hard surface. It helps to resist any type of uh, micro welding and other issues that you can get. And that's really key because micro welding, the worst time for micro welding is during break in. Mm -hmm. So that's a real critical time to make sure you've got clean, fresh oil. You've got tight micron filtration because essentially what micro welding is, is when a piece of metal actually melts or basically embeds in the ring groove mm. and then welds itself to the piston ring. Be it stainless steel or iron, if there's a piece of metal containing chunk of debris in here, because engines you know, make metal during breaking. That's mm -hmm. in fact, mm -hmm. there's usually three or four times more wear during break-in that in any other time of that engine's life. Mm -hmm. We can see it in the used oil analysis. A brand new engine is gonna put out way high levels of wear metals. Mm -hmm. Then over time, usually within the first two oil changes, it goes from up here down to there, which can be handy to have information to know as an engine builder. If you know what those levels are mm -hmm. during break-in, then you know what you should never see again for your engine. Right. <laughs> As opposed to what's high for a diesel engine, you can know what's high for your engine. Right. But that point being is that what you're doing either through hard anodizing or this electric missile process, you're making that ring groove harder. Harder for any particles to embed themselves. Which is nice about this nickel stuff, if I understand it right, mm -hmm. is it doesn't leave the surface as rough in the ring groove as hard anodizing does. When that hard anodizing makes it rougher, can't seal as well. I mean, mm -hmm. I know from mm -hmm. our NASCAR days at Joe Gibbs Racing, we made the most power with unanodized ring grooves. Mm -hmm. But but <laughs> the longevity. <laughs> right, that was the challenge is because you had to get the engine to break in mm -hmm. and you wanted to go to the racetrack and you didn't want to wear the springs out. Mm -hmm. So you were trying to run the engine really hard really soon to get it to break in to make sure that you had the most power if you got the racetrack. But if you did that, you yeah. might push it too hard because if you just baby the engine, it won't micro weld it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it may never break in either. There's that balancing act that can be tough and this kind of gives you that margin of error, especially if you're gonna be putting a lot of boost to it, which is, I'm sure that's the reason for that. Yeah, this one actually is gonna be a nitrous application. So uh, we, we didn't same, talk about it. Same difference. Now, but yeah, with <laughs> nitrous oxide, sort of pressure. what are we looking at? Anything different versus boost from turbo or supercharger versus nitrous? Is there anything else that's kind of different? Well, that's where you wanna to go to the steel ring. Nitrous is, doesn't like the Molly type of rings. It typically, you know, the flame speed with nitrous is so fast that shock that can hit the piston rings can actually cause the molly to flake off. So gotcha. when you're heavy nitrous applications, you want that PVD coated steel type ring. It's what's best for that application. So typically, yeah, your super high boost nitrous, they tend to kind of come meet the same place. Mm -hmm. Steel, PVD, that's what you want. Having the gas ports in there to get it to seal up because you don't want the nitrous in the crankcase. You want mm -hmm. to keep it up here so you don't get any like flame paths down the piston. Saws on your piston is never a good thing. Yeah, I would imagine. Now, something- But you also want high oil ring tension. When you have power adders, be it boost mm -hmm. or nitrous, you're not trying to scrape every last little bit of power out of this engine by reducing oil ring tension. One thing we do at Total Seal, we offer ring packages in standard tension, but we also have low tension and high tension. Oh, okay. So that you can bump that oil ring tension up when you've got a power adder, because when you can both on 200 horsepower, mm -hmm. who cares about the 10 you gave up there? Right. But you got better oil control, so I get by giving up 10 horsepower in ring tension, I gained durability because now I'm not gonna be getting oil in the combustion chamber, so I don't have to chase my tune mm. or risk detonating the engine 
based on pool roll control. Okay, so now here's something I don't think I've ever asked you about. I'm gonna just wheel it in here. And uh, part of this goes out to the, I know the shootout audience is out there watching and you guys are like, why are you putting this stuff on our channel, man? You know, well, <laughs> it's, we got some Mitsubishi stuff here this time, all right? All right um, this cool. is an actual engine we hope to have out at the shootout this year. Mm -hmm. And essentially what's happening, we're seeing it in a lot of different communities, but what's happening is, you know, these old cast iron blocks, it's getting harder to find ones that are still, you know, mm -hmm. not overboard uh, immensely or mm -hmm. in good condition and stuff. So we just started playing around with doing some sleeving on these. Really happy how this one turned out. We actually have a dyno day coming up here and we're hoping to see about 920, 940 at the wheels with this one. Nice. But the makeup of the cylinder is different. Instead of being a gray cast iron, you mm -hmm. know, this is an aftermarket sleeve. This is a ductile iron sleeve. Mm -hmm. What should I do with this engine that I wouldn't do typically with gray cast iron? Is there any differences there? If I know that it's gonna be E85 and it's gonna be high boost, what are those things that I should be considering? So the surface finish and say the ring stuff is really the same regardless of what the bore material is. Okay. Other than say Nicosil or Suma bore, some kind of plasma spray bore, totally different. But in this case, really what you're looking at is changing the stone, the abrasive you're using. The harder this sleeve is, because it is harder than the block. Right. Let's say before you were maybe using a JHU 512. Now you met these a JHU 412. You're going to have to go to a rougher grid abrasive because it's harder. Or maybe you have to go from, say, maybe a 518, which is that 18 is the bonding strength, right. to a 512. Have an abrasive that's more aggressive to deal with the fact that this is harder. Kind of like with the Suma bore stuff, you know, the plasma spray bore, you have to hone it with diamonds. With diamonds, yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's so hard, you gotta use mm -hmm. diamonds. Yep. So this is one of those things when you sleeve it, you gotta go in that direction because if you just hone the block, and get the same numbers you would normally get to say gray cast iron, mm -hmm. and you do this, hone it the same way, the numbers won't be the same. Gotcha. Because this is harder. So you still want the same numbers to hold that oil, but the honing process, the choice of abrasives, the speed and the load may have to change because of that harder material. Cool. Well, um, that, again, those are all the things to get the durability, because as we all know, mm -hmm. anybody can make a hero run. Yes. On the, the dyno The one run wonders, The one yes. run wonders are out there. What's harder is to make it repeatable. Mm -hmm. like we were working on a boosted engine for the Engine Performance Expo last year. And the cool thing about it is, Okay, it made 1,300 horsepower mm -hmm. at 18 pounds of boost. It's a 392 uh, cubic inch LS engine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's cool about it is that engine can make that same run over and over and over again. We got you know 40 runs that engine, 12 of them are over 1,300 horsepower. It's not a one hit wonder, it's th this engine's capable of doing it over and over again. And you get that way by having all the attention to detail. Mm -hmm. It's not just having, oh, that brand piston or that brand ring or whatever that is. You gotta right. go way beyond that and look into those subtle details. A guy the other day was saying that, you know, the difference between failure and success is pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. The difference between success and excellence is subtle. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the little things that get you to that higher level. Definitely, that attention to detail is, is really, like you said, you got to look at the whole system. It's it's a soup, as you say. You mm -hmm. know, it's not just, hey, I'm buying some great ribeye steak here. I'm mm -hmm. going to have a great dinner. It is what's in that soup, and one bad ingredient in that soup, it spoils it. When I was at Joe Gibbs Racing, mm -hmm. we entered into this development partnership with a company called Lubrizol. They're one of the largest companies in the whole world that makes the additives that go into the different brands yep. of oil and fuel. And we had this little skunk works team there, mm -hmm. and they had some of these physicists and chemists and stuff that would come in, and they would come visit the shop. The first thing they'd always want to do is look at parts. They didn't want to talk about oil mm -hmm. or chemistry. They wanted to look at parts, and they wanted to check surface finish. They wanted to talk about coatings. They were interested in the metallurgy and the geometry of things before they ever began talking about chemistry. Very interesting. And that's the oil company asking these questions, right? Yeah, right? yeah. They're the smartest guys in the whole world with motor oil didn't want to talk about oil. They wanted to talk about what, 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 what coating is this? What's that geometry? How much rock? They wanted to know that stuff because from there they could figure out, okay, what's the chemistry we need to optimize the soup? 
we've been using thin rings for a long time and we're comfortable when you know everything went from being you know 1.5 1.2 to 1.2 1.2 or 1.0 1.2 now 1.0 1.0 we've kind of ridden that and really haven't had resistance to that but right. i know i What's the domestic side? I gotta believe it's it's driving them crazy to think they're used to using these giant oh, rings oh, and God. now yeah, oh, yeah. are they just yeah. freaking 564, out? 564, 564, 316. A 564 top ring oh. is two millimeter. Wow. So they were used to having two millimeter, two millimeter rings, <laughs> and now we're making 1,300 horsepower reliably with one millimeter rings, and they're like, no, there's no <laughs> way, you can't do that. I'm like, well, don't tell the engine that because you just did it. It just made 10 pulls at 1,300 horsepower with a one millimeter ring, mm -hmm. and you pull them apart, and everything looks great. The cylinders look great. Service finish is good. The rings are healthy, and they were gapless and gas ported, by the way. Mm -hmm. So you took this little bitty one millimeter ring, and you chopped haul holes in it and did all that. It's the material technology mm. that allows these things. And like I said, the import side's been embraced it. They're way ahead of the curve. The domestic guys, they're slowly catching on. Well, thank God, you know, the LS engine actually didn't come from the factory with 564 rings in it. Right. Otherwise, they'd, they'd still be stuck there. <laughs> well, it's one of those things, too, you, we were talking about. People, when they find something that works, they tend to stick with it. Yes. And unfortunately, they get comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. But just because it works doesn't necessarily mean it works the best that it could. It couldn't be optimized or there's more performance left on the table. Right, and I think back to the, the temperature difference. You know, we were running these engines with big rings in it mm. and you're generating all this temperature, you know, water temperature and oil temperature. So what are you doing? Now I'm, I've got you know, bigger radiators, I've got oil coolers, I've got all these other things in my car, mm. more weight, and there's more things that go wrong. Mm. If I go to a thinner ring combination, regardless of what horsepower it makes, if I bring that engine temperature down, now from a car packaging mm -hmm. scenario, I can have a smaller radiator. I don't have to have as a big a duct here. It, it, it just makes things easier. It was one of the biggest things we did in NASCAR when they used to have the two car draft deal. Right. Is we really worked hard on trying to get the temperature of that engine down because when you were starved for air, uh makes sense. Temperatures went up and that's really where a huge gain came from and it's like that temperature part of this equation something people shouldn't overlook. Very interesting. Now I know you guys are out there I don't know how many are following or actually asking questions live right now but if you guys have a question that you'd like to ask us please shoot it off to us right now. Boosted or NA, you're gonna get better ring seal. And so if your your pistons don't come with gas ports, if you have non-gas ported pistons, the easiest way to upgrade the performance of that mm -hmm. piston is just by swapping that top ring and putting a gas ported top ring in it. And it, especially in today's environment where parts supply is challenging, mm -hmm. it's easier to find shelf pistons and lead time shorter typically than custom pistons, right. like we did with the, the boosted LS engine. Mm -hmm. Mala Motorsports had some really great off the shelf, one millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter pistons available that we could buy that day. Mm -hmm. So they sent us those pistons, and of course those pistons didn't have gas ports. So what we do? Put a gas port ring in it, bang, now you have a race quality piston because it's the right material, right kind of forging. Mm -hmm. It just didn't have gas ports. We fixed that by just swapping a ring. Very cool. Well, I want to thank you guys all for joining us. Yes. Now, this segment here that we did live, we're going to hopefully be doing more of these and incorporating mm -hmm. them all in our new show that will be coming out very soon called D-Sport Live. So make sure you follow us on all of our social feeds so you know exactly when that's going to launch. And uh, Lake, I want to thank you very much for coming down, and uh, we look forward to your next visit. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Have Great a good time. One. Thank you.